Before we start talking about band theory, let's quickly review the structure of the atom. As you know, the atom consists of a nucleus with electrons that are in orbit around it. And these orbits are in discrete shells. So let's take atoms such as sodium. We know it's sodium that, as long as it's neutral, it has 11 protons and 11 neutral uh, electrons. And these are arranged in depending on how many electrons can be held in each shell. And so we have two in the inner shell, we have eight in the next shell, and then we have one in the outermost shell. This electron here, which is very loosely held, in fact, and it actually contributes to the reactivity of sodium, actually also is referred to as the valency shell. So the valency shell is simply the shell that contains some or uh, electrons in the outermost shell. Now, because this particular shell isn't, uh, is at the outermost and the electrons aren't tightly held, this electron actually, under a potential difference, is free to move. And so this particular area or, or shell is actually also referred to as a conduction band. In other words, it doesn't require, this electron doesn't require any energy to become conductive it is already in an energy state that allows it to become conductive. But what happens if we have a different atom? In this case, we have chlorine. Now, chlorine has seven electrons in its outermost shell, and as a result, it actually these electrons are actually quite tightly held. The outermost shell is still called the valency band. It is the actual outermost shell, and therefore, it contains the valency electrons, seven in this case. But these electrons are held tightly. They do not have enough energy to become conductive, staying in this position. In order to become conductive, they actually have to move to the conduction band, but is now in a new shell. There are no electrons, in this case for chlorine, in this conduction band. However, for an electron to go from the valency band to the conduction band in order to become used for conduction, it needs to cross a forbidden gap. According to Bohr's, Bohr's theories, an electron can have enough energy to be in this shell, it can have a certain amount of energy to be in this shell, a high amount of energy, but it cannot exist in between. So in order to get from this shell to this shell, it needs a very specific amount of energy. And in terms of insulators, this is actually quite a large gap to overcome. So now let's talk about band theory. So imagine now our valency and our conduction bands um, represented by two boxes. So in this case, we are going to represent a conductor. So here's a conductor, and a conductor has a um, a conduction band that overlaps the valency band, such as this. As you can see, it's represented by an increasing amount of energy as we go up. So, because they overlap, any electrons that exist in the valency band is automatically in the conduction band. There is no gap for them to have to tra uh, traverse in order to become conductive. In other words, outermost electrons are free to conduct. But what about an insulator? Well, an insulator also has a valency band and a conduction band, but there is a quite a large separation or forbidden gap, in, in this case for the insulator, for the electrons in the valency band to get to the conduction band. Because this, because this gap is quite large, and it can range six to seven, eight, nine electron volts, then we say these electrons, because they're unable to get into the conduction band, are therefore unable to become conductive, and hence it is an insulator. But what about the third situation? How about a semiconductor? Well, a semiconductor also has a valency band and a conduction band. There is also a gap. However, the forbidden gap is much smaller. And so for an electron to move from the valency band to the conduction band, 
It does require a certain amount of energy to move from the valency band to conduction band, but the energy can be gained through thermal energy. So for example, if I have a semiconductor such as germanium, the, it only needs about 1.1 electron volts to traverse it. How do I manage to do that? Well, I simply heat up the substance. And as long as it is above zero degrees Kelvin, then there may be enough energy for electrons to move from the valency band to the conduction band. And of course, once they're in the conduction band, they're free to become a conductive. And they will conduct if I apply electric field to them or apply potential difference across them.